already back, as a mother and father being swallowed up by an escape rhinoceros. But I just had to tell you. It's because of this event that this story happened. You see, life is really great for a hero, James Henry Child, until this happened to his friends. Now, well, he was sent away to go with his two aunts, on Spawn and on Spider. I'm sorry to point out, but it was, that they were really horrible people, selfish, lazy, and cruel. And right from the beginning, they started many portraits, which was no reason at all. They never told him by the name. They always referred to him as, you disgusting ladies, or you filthy creatures, or you miserable creature. And they certainly never gave him any place to play or picture books to look at or read. They lived, on Scrunch, on Spiker, and not James as well, in a queer ramshackle house and up on a high hill in South Africa. It was so high from anywhere in the garden, James could look out and see for miles and miles across marvelous land and see woods and fields. And on a very clear day, if he went in the right direction, he could see a tiny gray dot far from the rear on the horizon. She used to live in this beloved mother and father. And just beyond that, he could see the sea itself, a long, thin, blackish blue like line of ink beneath the river of the sky. And then one day, something rather peculiar happened to James. It all started on a blazing hot day in the middle of summer. Hunt Spiker, Hunt Sponge, and James were all out in the garden. Jane had been put to work as usual. This time, he was chopping wood for the kitchen stove. Hunt Sponge, Hunt and Spiker were sitting comfortably in the deck chair nearby, watching him to make sure they didn't stop work for one moment. Let's take a closer look at what's happening. I look and smell, I do declare, as lovely as a rose. Just feast your eyes upon my face, observe my shady nose. Behold my heavenly silky locks, and if I take off both my socks, you'll see my dainty toes. But do you forget, my dear old sponge, how much your tummy shows? Why, sponge, you're red. Go soak your head. My sweet, you cannot win. Behold my gorgeous coat shape, my teeth, my charming grin. Oh, beauteous me, how I adore my radiant looks. And please ignore the pimple on my chin. My dear old trap, to the world I'll shout. You're only bone and skin. Such loveliness as I possess can only truly shine. In Hollywood, I do declare, oh, wouldn't that be fine? I capture all the nation's hearts. They give me all the leading parts. The stars would all resign. I think you'd met without a mistake. A lovely Frankenstein. What's the matter with you? Uh, Auntie Spiker, I feel as if, as if I'm going to, going to faint. Stop that immediately. Get on with your work, you gassy little beast. Uh, Auntie Sponge and Auntie Spiker, could we all, please, just for once, go to the seaside on the bus? It isn't far, and I feel so hot and awful lonely. Why, you lazy, good for nothing brute! Me I certainly will! I shall beat you later on in the day when I don't feel so hot. Now get out of my sight, you disgusting little worm, and give me some peace. It was at the first thing, around the peculiar thing. Come closer to me, little boy. Come right up close to me, and I wish you something wonderful. See this? You know what this is, my dear? You know what's inside this little bag? Take a look, my dear, and I wish you something wonderful. Listen to them. Listen to the move. There's one power of magic and these little green things in all the rest of the world. Beat upon insect and or cheat. That would be the one to use the power of the magic. 
Off you go. Hurry. Don't wait. Now's the time. Hurry.
can't hear tonight. They don't even hear sound. It's strange to buy him. Boy, am I hungry. I suppose I should be more concerned about my aunt, though. Aunt Spigus doesn't always do as think of myself. Maybe she's right. Gee, it's kind of spooky. Can you imagine how James feels right now? Have you ever been alone in a dark, quiet night? Well, here is where James knows that something stranger than ever is about to happen to him. He just knows it. He can feel it coming. Everything feels so different. Suddenly, the whole place seems to be alive with magic. Wow, it feels so soft and warm. It's a little furry, like the skin of a baby mouse. What's that? I, I, I don't believe it, but there's, there's a hole in the side. It's quite a large hole, sort of like an animal the size of, the size of a fox, I think. This isn't just a hole, it's a tunnel. Boy, it shows down from Murphy in here, and these walls are wet and sticky, and tastes like peach juice dripping from the ceiling. Delicious! Now it's going uphill, so it's very center. Ouch! What's this? It, it, it looks like a solid wall. It, it feels like wood, except it's very jagged and full of deep grooves. Good grief! I know what this is. I come for the stone in the middle of the peach. And here is what appears to be a small door, cut into the base of stone. Let's see now. Uh, there! It's been open. What's this like? Oh, nonsense, Earthworm. We're about to 
visit the most amazing places and see the most marvelous things. Isn't that so, Sophie? There's no knowing what we shall see. Give us some more light. I'm trying. I'm doing my 
But when? Why is then? I don't know, but I'll bet it's some good. Oh, we're probably at the bottom of a coal mine. Perhaps we're in the be middle of a beautiful country full of songs and music. Or in the seesaw. Well, that's where the children down in sand can play with. Um, pardon me, but am I wrong in assuming that we seem to be bobbing up and down? Bobbing up and down? What on earth do you mean? Oh, <laughs> 
Nor do I, sir. Do you think it's fun, us? I tell you, I don't like it. It could be dangerous. Holy cat! That's it! Send a message to the Queen once the country must be warned! Oh, dear, it scares even me. 
Well, anyway, the owner of the store does not sound anywhere. This is how quiet it is. The peach is swaying gently, quietly. Right. Now they're all like the airplanes are roaring through the sky, so I've been whatever that might be looking up there in the great cloud mountains. Just has to be a parade for these wonderful visitors. 
A procession was formed, and in the lean car sat James and all his friends. Next came the giant peach itself. Crowds went wild, cheered with excitement. They yelled, they screamed, they clapped, and they cheered, and they loved when James were waving as they went by. And then a rather curious thing happened. A girl came running out from the crowd and yelled, Oh, James, can we please just have one piece of your marvelous peach? Suit yourself, said James. I won't keep it for long anyway. Needless to say, that was the beginning of her end of her peach. Children came from everywhere. They jumped into the truck and ate to the hearts of the tent. And as to James, who never thought that this would be so many children in the world, this was the most marvelous thing he had ever seen. The centipede was a vice president of Blue Machine Manufacturing. The earth run with her lovely pink sin was employed by women's face creams. The spider, after she had been taught to make nine often, made type of walkers for book walkers. The old green grass summer joined the New York Symphony, where his plane was greatly admired. The glow arm, as she was the light inside of the torch, thus saved grateful light bill every year from New York City. The ladybug, after she had been haunted all her life by her children, all dead, made the head of the fire department and lived happily ever after. And as for the enormous beach stone, it was set up permanently in place of honor and joined the park. And as it was not only a famous monument, but it was also a famous house. And inside that famous house lived the famous person, James Henry Chowder himself. And on any day of the week, you can go knock, and the door will be open to you, and he'll tell and tell again of his stories. So one day he thought it would be nice if he sat down and wrote a book for everyone to know. So he did, and that we have just seen.
start just knowing what the character would say because of practice and you just get it in your mind. Yeah, Gabby? I would go same with Gracie. The thing is, is that you just, you don't necessarily have to memorize your lines, but you just have to know what your character would say at the exact moment of the scene. Yeah, very important. Uh, Naomi? Um, let me tell you how it's done. <laughs> Basically, you record yourself reading it, then you play it back, listen to it a few times, and then try to say it at the same time, the past you said it. <laughs> oh, yes, Caitlin? I just break it down, like I go, um, like a few lines, like, I went scene by scene and just broke it down, so it's like, I didn't record myself because I'm lazy, so yeah, I just... <laughs> I just said the lines over and over again until I'm like, okay, I got this. Yes, repeat over and over. Addie? You need two things. A script and a patient mother. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 